Hey everyone, National Master Steven Adams here. Today I want to talk to you about a topic players of all levels run into all the time. And this is, of course, the question of what opening should I play? To answer that question, you have to understand yourself as a chess player and what you value in the opening. So overall, the goal of the opening is to get a good or at least playable position in the middle game. In general, I see three facets. To an opening that contribute to the likelihood of achieving this goal. The first facet of an opening is quality. Okay, quality. This is a measure of how objectively good the opening is. Not all openings are equal, and the better the opening is, the more likely it is that you'll get a good position going into the middle game. The second one is obscurity. This is a measure of how rare the opening is. An obscure opening can catch your opponents off guard, which can cause them to make mistakes or cause them to have to spend a lot of time in the opening navigating through it. And the third is difficulty. This is a measure of how easy the opening is to play. Uh, playing an opening that's easy can reduce the likelihood of you making mistakes and also allow you to get through the opening without spending too much time. So what it comes down to is you have to decide which of these facets matter the most to you. Quality, obscurity, or difficulty. For me, I care the most about quality, difficulty, then obscurity in that order. It's very important to me that my openings are objectively sound. I don't want, you know, I don't want the computer telling me, you know, my, I, I'm just much worse out of the opening. That really bothers me. I can't play an opening like that. And I want openings that aren't too difficult to play. I don't mind playing the main lines. It's the main line for a reason. I, I just want to get a decent position out of the opening and not have to have too difficult of a time doing that. So, for the rest of the video, I'll talk about specifics. I'm going to talk about specific openings that you can play based on a, um, which of these facets that you value. So, if you value quality, you want a, an opening that's objectively good above everything else, I would play a classical opening. I would look at E4 main lines. So, if, you're an E4, if you want to be an E4 player, I'd look at main lines such as the Rui Lopez. This is popular at all levels of chess. It's extremely popular at the grandmaster level, and there's a lot of theory and a lot of ways you can take advantage of these types of positions, and if you understand them, you can definitely get good chances in the middle game. <coughs> I would recommend against the Sicilian, I would recommend that you play the open Sicilian. This is the most testing line against the Sicilian, and... Again, there's lots of theory depending on what black can do. They only had to go knight c6 on move 2. They can go d6. There is tons to learn in this variation, but again, this gives white the best attacking prospects and the best chance to play for an advantage. Against the French defense, I would play um, an e6. I would play either the classical or the terrache variation. These are the two best variations against the French if you want to try to get an advantage. And... Uh, in the Karo Khan variation, I would play the advance. I think that the advance is very strong as it helps you control two squares that uh, your opponent might want to develop their pieces to. There are some very sharp lines in this variation, and I think it is the most testing thing that White can do against the Karo Khan. If you want to be a d4 player, if you want to go down this route, I would recommend you absolutely need to play the Queen's Gambit, so d5, c4. And I would play all the main lines in the Slav after c6. I would play all these main lines in e6, you know, play all the main lines in the Queen's Gambit declined. If they play um, knight f6, we're again going c4, and you can play all the main lines in the um, Nemzo Indian with knight c3, bishop b4, or you can play for a Queen's Indian if you prefer that after knight f3, b6. So... But either way, um, I would also, um, you need to, I, I would just say play the main lines above anything else if you're concerned about quality over anything else. Um, if the opening is good, nothing, and yeah, if the opening is good, nothing else really matters. As long as you're capable of playing the opening, if you can keep up with the learning curve and the difficulty, nothing else really matters because it can be difficult or it can be extremely common. But if you know how to play it, you'll always be in the game. So if you're willing to pick quality and put in the work to do that, you'll always have a good game going into the middle game. 
if you value obscurity, then I'd say sidelines are the ways to go, and I'd say gambits too. So against one e5, I think a really good gambit is the scotch gambit. I play this quite a bit. So it goes d4, takes, and bishop c4. And there's a lot of tricky lines in this variation. Um, because of this quick development, sometimes you have tactics you might play c3 and attempt to gambit this pawn. Um, really, white's going to get quick development. Um, you meet knight f6 with e5. And yeah, white has really good chances to play for an advantage in this opening, good chances for an attack. It's a little bit off the beaten trail. Uh, against the Sicilian, I would recommend playing either the wing gambit. Um, this is a nice surprise opening, and it can be kind of difficult to know what to do. I mean, I've fallen victim to this opening quite a few times. And I'd also recommend the close Sicilian. This is a nice opening because sometimes if once the center locks up, as in the name close Sicilian, you can begin to launch an attack on the king side by pushing this, eight, like let's say, the h-pawn. Against the French defense, I would recommend playing the Milner Berry Gambit. I played this opening with quite a bit of success. I do really well in blitz and rapid games with this. So this gambit um, is reached in the advanced variation. And here you go bishop to d3. And after bishop d7, castles. And here you're going to gambit this pawn. But after... Um, or actually, I prefer the knight bd2 move order here, but either way you want to do it, the idea is that you're going to get big development advantage, and you're already castled. Black is three moves away from castling. They have to develop this bishop, they have to develop the knight, and then they have to castle kingside. And even if they do castle, they might be castling right into the attack. So the premise of this opening is that black just simply doesn't have a safe place to put their king, and this is a very, very dangerous opening. And against the Karo Khan, um, there are a couple things you can do. I would suggest, um, one, I could suggest the accelerated pan off. So after d5, you can play, um, you can trade on d5. And after knight f6, I like this queen a4 line. And really what you're going to do is you're going to overprotect this d5 pawn, and eventually you're going to play like a d6 break at an opportune time. So if you're a d4 player and you're looking for something obscure, um, I might recommend that you play the Blackmore Diver Gambit. This is a very dangerous opening, like let's say after knight f6, and you're going e4, takes, and knight c3, and you can reach at this move order. Um, and yeah, this is... Of course, we're giving up a pawn, but it's a very aggressive setup with these open uh, E and F files. White's going to get quick and easy development, and this can certainly be very dangerous against an unprepared opponent. Remember, if we're going for something obscure, we're not necessarily concerned with the objective evaluation of it, but we want something that's going to be dangerous and can catch our opponent um, off guard. Another thing I might recommend that you play D4. Um, you could certainly go for a... Uh, Joe Bava London, like let's say knight c3, d5, bishop f4. This has seen a lot of popularity as of recently, and what you're going to do, you're delaying this knight f3 move because eventually you're going to play for like f3, e3, bishop d3, and e4. You're going to play for this f3 and e4 pawn push. And yeah, this, this uh, has seen some more popularity as of lately, and it's a very, very tricky opening. So one thing that's, that is um, notable, that if you're going to play an obscure opening, it needs to at least be playable. So if you start out the game with a bad position, while the opening may be obscure, you can be giving your opponent a big margin of error. So even if they make a mistake or don't make the most accurate moves, they could still get the upper hand. So you need to make sure if you play an obscure opening that it has some bite, that you're actually giving your opponent uh, legitimate chances to go wrong. So, if you value something easy, if you want something easy to play, I would recommend playing uh, one you could do the ready system with a quick uh, king side fianchetto. This is extremely popular at all levels. And 
yeah, once you fee and keto here, you can you can double fee and keto with b3 and bishop b2, or you can play for a sort of king's Indian attack d3, rookie one and e4. Um, my choice until I became a national master, I played um, b3 almost exclusively in tournament, and um, yeah, the I just didn't want to learn any theory. I played b3 and bishop b2 and. You, there's basically, you don't need to let know any theory if you want to play this, and you'll get, you know, probably a more equal or, but position. But it's, it's interesting, and it's very easy to play. Um, another opening that's, of course, extremely popular, you can always play the London system, d5, bishop f4, knight f6, knight f3. This is extremely popular, especially at the novice level, because it's one of the easiest openings to play at chess, and it's very logical. But, yeah, I'd, I'd say that if you want something easy, go for a setup in which you can develop your pieces naturally, and go for more system openings where you can play the same way regardless of what your opponent does, so you can really cut down on the amount of theory that you need to learn. I would again recommend that you need to play something that won't give you a bad position in the middle game, because while you might have an easy opening, you could be giving yourself a very difficult middle game if your opening's not very good. So let's take a look at the black side now. So if you value quality, you may have noticed that I didn't mention every opening in response to 1e4 before. I only talked about what I do in response to e5, the king's pawn opening. I only talked about the Sicilian, the French, or the Caracan. And the reason this, I mean, these are the most common openings, and these are the highest quality openings. So if you're going to play for quality uh, as black against 1e4, you should be either be playing the King's Pawn opening, the Sicilian, the French, and the Caracan. Those are the four best responses to 1e4, and those are the only four openings that are seen at a high level today. Against uh, d4 openings, you have a lot of options. So you can play, if you want to play 1d5, I would recommend either playing the QGD, the Queen's Gambit Decline, or the Slav. And if you want to go with the Knight f6 route, one of the Indian openings, so c4, e6 is a Nimzo Indian, after Knight c3, Bishop b4, or Knight f3, b6 is a Queen's Indian. Uh, so those are good options. I would go, if you want Fian Keto, you can play the Grunfeld. This is an excellent opening. Or you can play the King's Indian Defense. So whatever you want to do, uh, I would say that those are really the most viable openings there. You should either go for the, the, um, the Queen's Gambit Decline or the Slav. Or you should go for one of the Indian openings. The King's Indian, the Grunfeld, the... Um, yeah, I, I would actually say that... Oh, oh, oh yeah, the Nimzo or Queen's Indian. So, and against anything else, like a Ready, you can always go for... Or, or in English, you can go for a QGD setup with E6 and D5 and Knight F6. So they go for, like, this King's Side Fianchetto. You can certainly play this way and get an at least equal position in the middle game. So... If you value obscurity, if you want something obscure with the black pieces, I would recommend the Janish Gambit and the Rui Lopez. Knight c6, bishop b5, f5. You know, I, I remember I had a tournament game one point when I was like an 1800 and my opponent was rated a little bit higher than me. But he just absolutely wiped me out with this opening. I was playing the Rui Lopez's white. I didn't know the theory here and I just got completely wiped off the board. So this can be a very dangerous gambit. Against the Queen's Gambit, if you want something a little bit off the beaten track, I would recommend playing either the Banco Gambit. So after c4, uh, c5, d5, b5. I think that this is a little bit off the beaten track, and this gives you excellent chances to play for an advantage due to the Queen's side pressure that you're going to have. And a lot of times, if white doesn't know what to do, there are a lot of things for white and the Banco that seem very, very natural, but are actually mistakes. So against an unprepared opponent, the Banco is an excellent choice. 
You can also go with the Dutch defense. I think the Dutch is also very dangerous against an unprepared opponent. Uh, these games tend to be very sharp. So that's um, uh, especially the Leningrad Dutch. I'd probably recommend the Leningrad Dutch with goes like C4, Knight F6, Knight C3, G6. So I'd probably recommend this variation of the Dutch defense if you're looking for something very dangerous. It's kind of like a King's Indian where you've already gotten this F5 break in but that can have some downside sometimes too, going for that F5 push so early. If you value something easy against E4, this is a little bit of a tough one since it's not really an easy way out, but I'd probably recommend the Karo Khan because it has a reputation for being solid and having natural development. I just feel like you're less likely to get in trouble for playing the Karo Khan than you are for playing the Sicilian. I mean, even today, sometimes against the open Sicilian, if I'm playing a player much stronger than myself, I can still just get wiped out. Um, and with the French, you can come under a lot of pressure uh, very easily because you're going to have less space. And in the Roy Lopez, of course, Knight C3, you're going to have to know a mountain of theory. This is what, probably the most theoretical opening in chess. So if you want something easy, I would say play the Karo Khan. Against d4, I would definitely recommend playing the Nimzo and Bogo Indian. This is an opening I played for a while as well, and I still do. So c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4 is the start of the Nimzo Indian. And I like the plan where you trade on c3 and put all your pawns on dark square. So you can play the this knight c6 variation. This is recommended in uh, Christoph Selecki's book on the Nimzo and Bogo Indian. And also... Um, and chess openings for black explained and the one of the main ideas here is you're just going to trade off your bishop so after like a3 and you're just going to play for a dark square blockade so i think that this uh yeah i think that this is extremely easy to play it's not too much to remember you're just trading off your dark square bishop and putting your pawns on dark squares and they play knight f3 you can again play bishop b4 bishop d2 Queen e7 and go for this exact same kind of strategy. We usually have castles and bishop g2, and now we trade on d2 and play d6. And again, we're just always trading off our dark square bishop, putting our pawns on dark squares. That's a very easy strategy against d4 openings. Uh, another thing that you can do. Um, against d4 is you can play the Dutch Stonewall and this is a little bit more systematic so like knight f6 knight c3 e6 knight f3 like let's say d5 you can go with and this this is very systematic um, you can get the same piece set up in formation more or less every time but the problem is that this opening's not exactly the most sound and you could find yourself in a difficult middle game so yeah there you have it those are some choices um for white and black if you're looking for something um if you're looking for high quality openings if you're looking for something obscure and uncommon or if you're looking for something easy to play if you're looking for high quality openings i would definitely either play the e4 mainline so the Rui lopez the open sicilian the classical or Tarash French and the advanced Karo Khan. Um, or I would be playing the Queen's Gambit and I'd be playing the main lines against the Slav, the King's Indian defense, the Grunfeld. I'd be playing all those main lines as those give you pretty good middle games. Uh, if you want something obscure, I'd be playing Gambit. So as E4, I'd be playing the Scotch Gambit. The, um, I'd be playing the Wing Gambit against the Sicilian. I'd be playing the Milner Berry Gambit against the French. And I'd be playing the Accelerated Panov against the Karo Khan. And if you're looking for something easy to play, I would just go for this quick Kingside Fianchetto like in the Ready system. Or I'd play the London system. Or I would play, um, you could play the Trompowski if you're looking for something that's not too difficult. But yeah, if you want something difficult, pick an opening with a development that's easy. And for the black side, if you want something good, um, I would definitely recommend playing the Sicilian, the French, the Scot, uh, the um, not the Scot, the Sicilian, the French, the uh, the King's Pawn opening or the Karo Khan. I would recommend playing against D4. I would play 
really any of the mainline openings, any of the Slav or Queen's Gambit decline, or any of the Indian openings, such as the Nimzo Indian, the Queen's Indian, the Grunfeld, or the King's Indian defense. And um, if you want something uh, obscure, you can again go for some gambits like the Janish Gambit and the Banco Gambit. And if you're looking for something easy, you can play the um, Nimzo and Bogo Indian or the Karo Khan. So I think those are some good repertoire choices. So yeah, I hope that's helpful and maybe that'll help you decide what you value most in the opening. It's all about um, obscurity, um, quality, and easiness. You can decide what you value, so I'll see you later.